Okay, so at the minute I'm just welding up a little bit of scrap. It's a three quarter inch BFP thread and I, it was a reducer from half inch to three quarter inch or vice versa. And I've just chopped the half inch side off and welded a piece of scrap onto the side to kind of seal it up. I think you'll be able to see just like that. And then this is going to be a plug for the end of a filter that I've put into the SS Brutech boil kettle so we can alter the duplex filter system which bunged up almost straight away when we used it the other day. So I'll show you what I've put together and uh, I'll talk about what's changed on the filter system and how it's going to operate moving forward. Okay, so looking at some of the first modifications that we've made, as you can see the temperature probes all look quite nice now, they're on a similar setting and what we've done here is introduce a little jumper cable between terminals uh, 4 and 5 and that works on the K-Type and the PT100, so we've got a PT100 for the mash and then K-Type thermocouples for the HLT and boil and by doing that the temperature readouts now are regulated I'm guessing that that little jumper cable provides some type of feedback loop so that the PID can figure out what the resistance of the cable is and then calculate the resistance of the thermocouple minus the cable if you know what I mean that's what I think it must be for anyway um, secondly you'll notice that the filter is gone so I've taken it apart but what I have saved is the Y strainers so we've now installed a valve on the outlet of this pump and that pump is just like all the others now it's just sat there uh, interchangeably and that pump is then going to feed be fed by the outlet the main outlet and that's where we're going to house the sight glass I think so we can see what we've got coming out of the tank and then that pump is either going to go back into the tank via the whirlpool port which is here or perhaps by uh, this extra valve that I've put on the top I noticed during the brew day whilst I was still running off the mash tun into the boil kettle that was filling and I actually wanted to whirlpool as well so I got a consistent gravity reading and we didn't have any stratification of the wort in there so having that extra port in the side allows me to do that and then the Y strainers have been relocated to the inlet of the plate chiller so the idea being if we do get a bunged up Y strainer we simply isolate the flow take the Y strainer off and replace it with the other one which can be sat in some star sand or whatever and then we're ready to go and you can clean the other one out I think that's an easier process there's less bug traps involved in it and quite frankly look how easy that was I can just take this away to the sink now we're not going to be spilling any stuff on the floor any work on the floor so if Tom's watching that's a possible remedy for you mate I'm sorry that you've had to buy some extra valves and whatnot but I'm sure you'll use them I'm no doubt that they'll be used in some other part of the kit and then finally let me come round the side all right chancy boy uh, to act as a pot filter I fabricated this little beauty and it sits on there like a bazooka tube but it is stainless steel and if I just rotate it two or three turns it screws into the back of the outlet don't know what that was screws into the back of the outlet and as you can see we've welded it onto the pipework there and then this back section is what you've just seen me weld and then this, if I can do it one handed, will screw out 
and the idea behind that being we then have come on we then have a direct line of sight to clean the inside of the tube out as well and that will just screw back on as required and what I like about that is that now it absolutely mirrors the extraction technique that we've got in the boil kettle we have one of those filters in there and it works perfectly so at least we know we're going to have a a straight translation from the pilot kit up to the big kit when we want to brew some different beers. You want to go home, buddy? Not yet, mate. We've got another hour yet. So, I think that's going to wrap it up, folks. There's the tilt. Broadcasting nicely. I do, however, want to take a sample of the plump water. It stopped at 1019. We kind of suspected it would. Uh, do I have the brew sheet over here? It's still at 18.4 degrees. The temperature's holding nicely. Um, yeah, and if I have a look on the Beersmith file, I think we were estimating a terminal gravity of... I can't see it. There we go, 13.3, 10.13.3, so it's a little bit high, but we were intending to put fruit in there, you see, and that fruit, I believe, would bring it down. So, I'm gonna maybe have a little taste, and uh, I'll maybe filter it onto some fruit, we'll see. But I don't think that's gonna happen today. So, in fact, I'm just gonna wrap it up, folks, and we'll catch it on tomorrow's vlog, where we'll get stuck into this plum porter, and explore it a little bit more. See you then. Cheers.